Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this student challenge hint video, we're going to talk a little bit about dynamically assigning the location of our map at runtime. This might be helpful for those of you who want to add new locations or allow users to pick their own, or even just select randomly from an array, which is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So the first thing we need to understand is why we might want to do this. If we take a look at the map root inside of our map holder in the AR tabletop kit provided to us by Mapbox, you'll notice that down here in the abstract map script, you'll notice that there's a latitude and longitude string. And right now we've got it set to 37.784179, negative 122 and some change. Now this is a static location on planet Earth, and we may not necessarily want wherever this is. So what can we do about it? Well, while we are in the editor, we can go ahead and update, update this to whatever we want. And if we click this search button, we can even find locations through Mapbox's search. For example, if I look up the town where I grew up, Valdez, AK. We've got the latitude and longitude right here of Valdez, Alaska. That's great and all, and that has a lot of uses, and we could always just pick out a static place that we really like and that we know the game is always going to look good in. But with the power of Mapbox and how it can dynamically do, well, everything, why don't we make it a little more fun? We can make this more interesting by adding a mechanic that lets us change this at runtime, whether that be from our player selecting a location of their own or from us randomly selecting one. Doing so isn't actually as hard as it sounds. There's a great functionality that's built into the abstract map class that we can use to make that happen. The first thing we're going to want to do is turn off this initialize on start. The abstract map class by default will initialize as soon as it starts up with whatever location is put in here. Since we plan on updating that, we don't necessarily want that to happen. So what do we do instead? We'll call it programmatically. Let's go and create a script. So right click on your scripts directory in your project explorer. And let's create a brand new folder. And we're going to call this Mapbox Managers. Let's right click on Mapbox, Mapbox Managers. And let's create a brand new C Sharp script. We're going to call this Location Selector. Double click the newly created Location Selector script and it'll open up in our IDE. This is just going to be a one use case. So let's get rid of the update function. And let's get rid of this comment above start. For this script, we're going to need one serialized field. So let's write serialized field, private, vector, 2D. And we're going to import this vector 2D class from mapbox.utils. It's really important to make sure that we've got that as opposed to a vector 2. And this is going to be an array of vector 2D. And we're going to call this locations. Then we need the awake function. And we're going to use this just to make sure that locations is not empty. So let's take out this throw statement and say assert dot is not null, and we're going to say locations, because we definitely don't want to be using an empty array for this. Now in our start function, we're going to go ahead and find the instance of abstract map. So let's say abstract map map equals find object of type 
abstract map. Perfect. Now, just to be safe, we want to make sure that map is not null. So we'll say if map does not equal null, then we want to select, then for right now, let's go ahead and just select the first member of this vector 2D array, just to make sure that this is working. So we'll say map dot set center latitude longitude and we're just going to pass in a variable that we haven't created yet called location just above the map this is where we're going to define what location we're going for so we'll just say vector 2d location equals locations array member zero for the moment being so let's save, and now our script is ready to use. So let's go back to Unity. Now that we've got our location selector set up, this script is ready to go. Let's go click on our map root. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Well, near the bottom, just above this abstract map script. And we're going to drag the location selector onto it. Now remember, we need to have at least one location in here, otherwise it's not going to run. So for right now, let's just add one member to this array. And you'll notice that there's an X and a Y value. It's important to remember that the X is the latitude and the Y is the longitude. With that in mind, let's go right down here into the abstract map script. And we're going to grab this string that's in the latitude longitude section. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it into the X position or the latitude. And then I'm going to cut this other value, the second value, and paste it into the Y slot. So you should have an X of 37.784179 and a Y of negative 122.401583. Now that we know that's how this is going to work, let's run it. Now you may notice that nothing's loaded as far as our map goes. That's because we didn't say initialize on start. Let me show you what happens if we do. Press play. And we have our current location. And that's cool and all. So why don't we want to have this initialize on start? Can you think of any reasons? Well, the biggest problem is when we call that function that I showed you of center latitude longitude at a location function that I showed you, it makes a new call and reloads the map, especially with map boxes set up where you have so many free calls to your to the API through the SDK before you start to get charged. You want to make sure that you're wise with your number of calls. You're essentially doubling up right here because it'll make a call to initialize. And then by the time it hits that script, it reinitializes. So while that's an easy way to set this up, it can quickly double your cost and cause you a lot of problems. So we don't really want to do that. But just to show you that this actually works, let's stop running it. And I'm going to change up the latitude and longitude in here. I'm going to change this to zero, zero. And we're going to press play. And you'll notice that now we're out in the middle of the ocean. And while it is awful hard to hit a building out here, it's also hard to hit a tank. And that kind of defeats the purpose of the game. So let's stop running this. And we're going to undo those changes that we made. We're going to take off this initialize on start. And we're going to go back to our script. Let's take it back to the drawing board. You maybe want wondering why I was showing you a way that doesn't work. The answer, the answer is actually pretty simple. If later on you decide that, you know, at some point you want to use this function, it's really useful to know. And there are a lot of uses for it. It's just the case that we're using, the case that we're trying to address right this minute 
it's not the best choice. So we're going to add one more serialized field. And we're going to say private int zoom. And we're going to set this to what we already know the map currently sits at, and that's 16. And down here, we're going to take out this map.setCenter lat latitude longitude. And instead, we're going to say map dot initialize. And we're going to pass in location and zoom. Cool. With that, this is actually ready to go. So let's save and head back over to Unity. Now that we've got a proper location and our zoom set up, let's press play and see what happens. Perfect. This ought to look awfully familiar. If we stop it and run it again with, let's try one and one this time and press play, we should see a totally different location. Which again, middle of the ocean. I'm not surprised there. Now that we know this is working, let's go ahead and undo a couple of our changes to get our latitude and longitude back. And we'll head back to our script to make this work for real. Now that we know this location is getting pulled in correctly and everything's loading right, let's change this up a bit. Let's add one more variable and we're gonna say int index equals random.range and we're going to put that range between 0 and locations.length. Since the integer version of random.range is exclusive, we don't have to worry about subtracting one from the length. It should be just fine. And instead of this 0, we're going to pass in index. Perfect. Now, if we head back to Unity, we can set this size. Let's change this to 3. And let's fill these locations. We're going to set u to 0, 0. And for this one, let's go with 49, negative 100. See if that lands us anywhere cool. Let's save, and we're going to go ahead and run this. OK, so obviously it picked the first element again, because this looks really familiar. Let's try running it again and make sure it's at least somewhat random. Cool. Looks like we're back in the ocean, which means it is selecting from this random range of elements, which is exactly what we were hoping for. So let's stop running it. Change this back to one for now, because that's that's all I'm going to have it set to for the moment for my copy. From here, the answer is actually pretty simple for what should you do next. You should go look up a few locations that you think would be really cool and add them to this array. You can make it as big as you want, add as many cities as you want, and that way there's dynamic gameplay every time you play. A different experience for every user, and even for the same user, it's a different experience every time they play your game, which is usually a good thing. It helps make your game more replayable, more useful, and more enjoyable overall. So great job following along. Hopefully this helped you learn a little bit more about the functionalities of Mapbox, and the ways that we can manipulate this map to our favor to get things done the way that we want them for our game. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.